Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bell keeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. of a world gone by speak again the immortal tale, Markheim. You feel safe, don't you, Markheim? You feel safe and flat and secure, don't you, Markheim? sitting all alone before the fireplace in your uncle's drawing room. Ah, but you're not alone, Markheim. I'm with you. With you all the time. Invert your eyes, Markheim, and look within you. Invert them if you can, and then perhaps you will see me. I love to watch you thus at rest, Markheim. Safe and fat and secure. For then you are so much my servant. Oh, phone. Stir, Markheim. Stir. Just when I was relaxing so nicely. Answer it, Markheim. Answer it. Mm. Oh, that instrument is a menace to the peace. Arise, Markheim, and do answer the phone. Confound it. Get up, Markheim. Get up and answer that phone. Hello? Hello? Is Markheim there? Speaking. Who's this? Rogers. R Rogers? For heaven's sakes, man. Uh, what's the matter? I told you never to call me here. Suppose my uncle answered the phone. Oh, listen, Markheim. I'm your broker, not your nursemaid. Well... What do you want, man? Quickly. One of the servants may come back. Your stock has dropped. I'll need money within the hour. Stock? Rogers, look. Let's not talk about this over the phone. I'll come over right away. You may not have time, Markheim. Oh. How much will you need? I'll try to raise it at once. Six thousand. Six thousand? So much? You knew the hazards when you bought on margin. Now, if I don't have the money within the hour, you will have lost everything. Within the hour. Within the hour. Six thousand. Six thousand. All right. All right. I'll try to raise it at once. Six thousand. Within the hour. Where am I going to get it? Come now, Markheim. There is a way, you know. Where am I going to get it? Let me help you, Markheim. Where am I going to get six thousand dollars? Let me suggest something to you, Markheim. Look around the room. Hmm. Nothing in this room is worth six thousand dollars. The wall, Markheim. The wall. A portrait of my uncle. Oh, I couldn't ask him, even if I could reach him within the hour. If he ever knew I was speculating. Not the portrait, Markheim. Behind the portrait. Behind the portrait. Wait a minute now. Hmm. There is a possibility after all. You're in deep already, Markheim. What have you to lose? I'm in deep already. What have I to lose? Stir, Markheim. Stir. Still, maybe it would be better to lose all that stock and forget about it. Move, Markheim. Move. Oh, why do I get into such dilemmas? Get up, Markheim. Get up and move. Oh, what the devil... Now, if I can only lift this picture off the wall. Help me. Oh, confound it. Set it down. There. There it is. Ah. Bet 
the old fella doesn't even guess that I know about this wall safe. Put your fingers up to the dial, Mark Hine. Or the combination, either. Put your fingers up to the dial and twist it, Mark Hine. Two to the right. All the way around and stop at eight. All the way around to the left. Past eight and stop at four. Ah, there it is. Now put your hand into the safe. Yes. There's the money. A small fortune. But I'll take just enough. Six thousand in wonderful paper money. Draw out the money, Markheim. I got it. Quickly now, Markheim. Quickly. Close the door of the safe and put back the picture. That's the way, Markheim. Rush into the street and through the city. Taxi! Taxi! Quickly. Quickly. My taxi, swift and sure. Now into the broker's building, Markheim. Up to his office. Place the money in his hand. Here's the 6,000, Rogers. Oh, quick work, Markheim. Now you may return to your uncle's home. But with leisure, Markheim. You may even walk if you wish. And you may cock your hat at a jaunty angle. For luck was with you this afternoon. And you may smile as you enter the drawing room once again. Oh, hello, nephew. Oh, Uncle, I... Uh, did I surprise you, my boy? Well, yes, sir. Uh, you're home early, aren't you? Yes, a little. Christmas Eve, you know. It's hard to get work on the afternoon before Christmas Eve. I thought I'd have my lunch at home and remain. You're right, Uncle. The afternoon before Christmas Eve is no time for business. Mm, I'm glad we're of the same mind. Sit down. Sit down. Yes, Uncle. Uh, this room is so comfortable. <laughs> oh, I hardly have time enough to enjoy it, though. That's true, Uncle. It's a room to relax in. I love to come here and just sit. Well, that's because the appointments are so carefully chosen. The furniture and the rugs and the hanging, they all complement each other. <laughs> Even that silly old portrait of me. Portrait? Yeah. Oh, oh yes. That portrait of you. Uh, <laughs> it's not so silly, Uncle. An excellent likeness of you. Thank you for the compliment, nephew. But I dare say you're lying. <laughs> Look at it. I see nothing wrong with it. Well, it's crooked. It's slightly off center. Oh, why, yes, it is. I'll fix it. Just a little push it. There it is. Is that all right? Yes, that's fine. Fine, thank you. <laughs> you know, that crooked portrait reminded me of something. Huh? Uh, do you care to tell me? Oh, it's nothing important. It just reminded me to take the picture down one of these days. Take it down? Why? Well, no, nothing special. Just to <laughs> dust it off a little, shall we say. Uh, perhaps I can help you. Uh, when are you going to take it down? Uh, not today. And tomorrow is Christmas... The next day, probably, and I won't need any help, my boy. No help at all. As you wish, sir. Uh, and uh, now I think I shall be going upstairs. I have a few gifts I still want to wrap. Uh, see you later, then. Yeah. Oh, now, wait a moment. What was it I wanted to ask you about? Ask me? I wouldn't know, Uncle. Oh, never mind. It's probably not too important if it slipped my mind. I'll call you if I remember... I'll see you later, nephew. Uh, goodbye for now, sir. Good heavens. The day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow, Markheim. And you know why he's going to take that portrait down. He's sure to examine that safe carefully. What'll I do? Replace the money, Markheim. Where can I get $6,000? Where can I get so much money by tomorrow? Think, Markheim. Think. What on earth's the matter with me anyway? Each problem begets a new one. I wonder if there's any escape. Think, Markheim. Think. Oh, uh, nephew. Uh, yes, Uncle. It just occurred to me. I, I can't find my ruby stick pin. Have you borrowed it? Why, no. I'd never borrow it without your permission. No, I see. Then I guess I must have lost it. Well, uh, never mind. I'll speak to my insurance broker. Uh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. One thing after another. 
Now, where can I get $6,000 by tomorrow? Think, Markheim. Think. Where? 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 The ruby stick pin, Markheim. Doesn't that suggest something to you? Now, who would have so much money? The ruby stick pin, Markheim. Don't you remember? Don't you remember that afternoon? That afternoon you entered the dealer's shop on that side street downtown? That dirty little deserted side street? Don't you remember how quiet the place was? How all alone you both were? Yes. So you're back, young man. I'm sure I'm welcome. You've made a tidy penny on me. Yes. And you should expect I would profit well. I think you profit much too well. Eh, some of my customers are ignorant, and then I touch a dividend on my superior knowledge. And some of them are... Some of them? Yes. Well, some of them are dishonest. In that case, I profit by my virtue. Frankly, I need no preamble to our dealings. Let's get on. Yes, indeed, let us get on. Uh, what have you brought me now? Another curio from your uncle's cabinet? No, not from my uncle's cabinet. I brought you this... Oh. And it's genuine, let me assure you. Your assurance promises me nothing. Uh, but it is, I tell you. Calm yourself. I trust my own eyes. It is genuine. Ruby stick pin. Mm. Very elegantly designed. How much will you give me for it? Three hundred. Why, you fool, that's worth at least a thousand. Does it matter whether I give you three hundred or three thousand? You lose it anyway. I'd rather enrich myself than some stock speculator. I'll not give it to you for 300. It's you who needs the money, not I. But 300? I'll be generous. 400, shall we say. Very well. Since I have no choice, I'll take the 400. Good. Now, you wait here. I'll go upstairs and fetch the money. You remember that, don't you, Mark Hine? You remember his exasperating gait up those stairs to the floor above, to the room above, to the place where he kept his money? How easy it would be. I wonder if he has that much money up there now. How can you doubt it? Six thousand dollars is a lot of money. Does he have it? Suppose he has. How could I get it? He never leaves his shop. You know how, Markheim? He'd be in the way. How could I get it? You know how, Markheim. It would be so easy. Oh, I think I'll think about it later. I'm going to the kitchen to talk to the cook a while. Get my mind off it. Run away if you like, Markheim. You can't escape me. Go into the kitchen. I don't mind. I'm right with you, Markheim. I'm right with you. Hello there, Mrs. Cleary. What? Oh, you startled me, Master Markheim. I was buried in this newspaper, didn't hear you come in. Say, what's so fascinating about that newspaper? I have a little time before the oven heats up, so I thought I'd read about that new murder. Murder? Yes, terrible thing, Master Markheim. The murderer used a knife. A knife? I guess it must be easy to commit murder with a sharp knife. Some people would run a knife into a man's body as easily as I would into that goose I'm cooking. Uh, I just came in for a piece of cake, Mrs. Cleary. Cake? I... Oh, yes, over there. You've got to admit that sometimes it's easy to commit murder. Of course, the murderer might be caught, but it would be kind of easy, wouldn't you say? Especially with a sharp knife. That's it, Markheim. A sharp knife. So easy. So easy. is formulating in your mind. Isn't it, Markheim? It should be easy. Six thousand dollars at the stroke of a knife. But you won't carry it out, Markheim, while you sit in your uncle's drawing room. 
If I only keep my nerve, if I don't break at the last moment. You won't break, Markheim. I'll be with you. Oh, uh, Merry Christmas, Uncle. No. Uh, What's the matter, sir? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I said, uh, Merry Christmas. It could be merry enough, you. I wish you wouldn't spend your leisure time in my drawing room. What? I, I won't if you don't want me to. In fact, I forbid you to use this drawing room as your den. I forbid you to lounge here alone. I'm sorry, Uncle. What have I done? I don't care to discuss it now, nephew. It's Christmas Day. But I would like an hour with you tomorrow. Of course, of course. As much time as you want. No, no, no. I'd like you to leave me. I have some thinking to do. I must have done something terrible. All right. I'll leave. I'll go at once. He knows Markheim. I wonder if he's looked in his safe. He knows Markheim. You'll have to act swiftly now. If he's going to speak to me tomorrow, I'll have to get that money. Today. 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 Here it is, Markheim. The dealer's house. Ring the bell. Don't hesitate, Markheim. Ring it. I can't. I can't kill him. Your uncle knows, Markheim. Ring the bell. Ring it. Again. Why does he delay? Well, what is it you want? Must you keep me out here in the cold? I was talking on the telephone. Now, what do you want? I'm not buying anything today. I haven't come to sell. Have you come to wish me a Merry Christmas? No. I've come to buy. A Christmas present for a lady. Why don't you go elsewhere? All the other shops are closed. It was a sudden invitation to dinner, and I mustn't go empty-handed. You'll be doing me a great favor, and I I'm willing to pay double. Uh, oh, well, come in, come in. You're an old customer after all. And I take it you're fond of the lady. Yes, very. Well, far be it from me to stand in the way of a courtship. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Especially when you're willing to pay double. Yeah, let me see, what have I got there? How do you like this mirror? 14th century, warranted. Comes from a good collection, too. Mirror? Get it away from my face. Why not a mirror? Get it away from my face, I tell you. No, not a mirror. Yeah. Perhaps you see in it a reminder of past sins and follies. I don't like mirrors. They say a mirror often yields a reflection of one's inner self. Enough! Enough! Take it away, I tell you. Very well. Calm yourself. Perhaps this may suit you. A silver compact here on the shelf. I'll get it for you. Now, Markheim. Now. While his back is turned. The knife, Markheim. Swing it with your whole arm. Swiftly. Swiftly. With your whole arm, Markheim. <laughs> Killed him. It is done, Markheim. It is well done. I've, I've killed him. I must get out of here. Fool, where are you running? I can't remain. They'll find me here. I'll hang. The front door. I must get out. Stop. Do you want to destroy yourself? You cannot go out that door. Listen to what is happening on the other side of it. Listen. Well, here's the place, Garrity. All right, you go on in. I'll wait outside. Now, don't be a grouch. This is Christmas Day, and we're both going to present this turkey to the old man. He's the worst miser that ever lived. What does he know about Christmas? That doesn't matter. You agreed to walk down here with me, and now don't go away. I'm going to knock on the door. There, you see, there's no answer. Maybe he's not home. He never leaves. I'll try again. Hello, hello in there. Are you coming out? You're making enough noise to raise the dead. Maybe he's asleep. Oh, come on, let's go. No, no, I think I'll wait a while. I, I expect he'll get up soon and walk over and open the door. You can go if you like. Uh, well, I guess I'll wait along with you. Did you hear that, Markheim? He's going to wait for the old man to get up and open the door. <laughs> 
<laughs> Such a joke. I, I must get out of here. You know he can't get up, don't you, Mark Hine? The back door. The yard. I must get out of here. I've, I've killed him. They'll find me and I'll hang. Stop running away, you fool. Are you going to forget your uncle and the safe behind his portrait? The back door to the yard. Stop where you are. <sighs> Don't you hear those voices in the alleyway? <laughs> Listen. They're saying something on, that Jerry. concerns you. Let me you. see what you got for Christmas. Oh, I got lots of things. Any marbles? Sure, Billy. A whole bag full. I got them in my pocket. So did I. Want to play me? Well, sure. Play you right now. Where do we play? Well, I don't want to play in the gutter. How about the backyard? His backyard? Why not? Don't be scared of that old foggy. We'll keep on playing until the old man gets up and opens the door and hollers at us. Okay, I'm game. Did you hear that, Markheim? Till the old man opens the door and hollers at them. I'm, I'm trapped in this house. You know he can't get up. Don't you, Markheim? I'm trapped in this house. Stop lashing yourself, Markheim. You have done well this afternoon, and a great deal more lies ahead. Now come along. Up the stairs. Higher. And higher. And higher still. Up the stairs to the landing. And through the door, Markheim. Through the door. And into this room. Here's where the old dealer keeps his money. Now look carefully. Remember, 6000 to replace in your uncle's safe. I must get that money. I must. Of course you must. It's safe up here and quiet. So quiet, Markheim, with the door closed. Nothing to distract my search for the money. Hmm. This desk. Not there. Perhaps. Perhaps behind this mirror, this full-length mirror, Markheim. It might. It might be behind that mirror. But, but I daren't look at it, except with the corner of my eye. Why fear the mirror, Markheim? The money is right behind it. Now look at it. I'll look behind the mirror as a last resort. Look at it now, Markheim, with your full face. No. No. Look into the mirror, Markheim. Squarely into the mirror. I... I should see my reflection. But... But I don't. Of course not, Markheim. You see me instead. Who are you? I am your evil genius, Markheim. You... You are the voice within my brain. You are the voice that has helped me to steal. And helped me to murder. What... What do you want of me? I have spent too long cultivating you as my tool, Markheim, to give you up easily. Once you trembled at the thought of theft, but I rid you of that fear, and this afternoon you reached the crisis. Murder. <laughs> let me alone. Please. I beg of you, let me alone. What's that? A footstep. Someone's coming up those stairs. Hide, Markheim. Hide. It's the dealer. It can be no one else. The dead man's coming up those stairs. If only I knew how, how to pray. The door. How can I hide from a dead man? Good heavens. Uncle. Well, nephew. I expected to find you here. Uncle, how'd you know? How'd you know? The ruby stick pin. Yesterday evening it was missing, and I thought you had borrowed it. I went into your room to look for it and found this on your dresser instead. The dealer's card. Exactly. When you denied borrowing the stick pin, I telephoned him. He remembered the pin. But it was no shock, my boy. I've never really trusted you... I have nothing to say, Uncle. And later that evening, I examined my safe behind the portrait. Six thousand dollars were missing. Then when you spoke to me this morning, when you forbade me to stay in your drawing room alone, you knew. Yes, I knew. 
And when you left the house this afternoon, I knew you were trying to find money to replace what you took from the safe. And where could you go for money? But to some dealer. I see. <laughs> so I telephoned him and asked him to call me. That is, in case you should arrive. And he agreed and left the side door open. Then that's why he kept me waiting outside. He was talking to you. That's how it worked out. I hurried down here with a policeman. The worst I had expected was that you'd be arrested for theft. And now it's for murder. Yes, and he's waiting for you downstairs. My nephew. Shall we go? Yes. Yes, I'll go with you. I'll go. But please, just one more moment to my I warn you, nephew, you cannot escape. I don't intend to, Arthur. Put that vase down. What are you doing? I'm going to smash that mirror. Wait, Markheim. Do not destroy me. I can help you get away. Your power is gone. You can't stop me from doing this. Uh, now, now I don't care about the scaffold, nor what lies beyond it. I've broken the mirror, and in the time that remains, I shall have peace. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the story, Markheim. Bellkeeper, toll the bell. Thank you.